since Sunday the 18th, a national farmer's strike takes place all around rural Colombia, in places as far as Boyacá, Cundinamarca, Cauca, Huila, Putumayo, Caldas and Nariño, blocking more than 40 roads nationwide in 17 regions of the country where Huila and Caquetá were completely isolated. Juan Manuel Santos, president of Colombia, while speaking about the strike on Sunday, August the 24th, said, El tal paro nacional agrario no existe. On its first week, the strike was skillfully politically discredited and brutally repressed by police and military force. This was all but ignoring mainstream media, which only reported the violence in the demonstrations by the demonstrators. Santos then continued, Pero hay otro tipo de personas que están aprovechando para causar un daño terrible y ahí el Estado va a ser absoluta y totalmente contundente contra esos violentos. Se han infiltrado en muchos de estos sectores queriendo en cierta forma tomarse la vocería y se toma la vocería ¿para qué? Para que no haya ni la, ninguna posibilidad de llegar a ningún tipo de acuerdo. However, these affirmations backfired on him rather quickly. When TV newscast and social media network broadcasted and reported images of thousands of people, 50,000 according to El Tiempo marching in Tunja, Boyacá, making noise with pots and pans in support of the farmers' strike. In Plaza Bolívar, downtown Bogotá, people demonstrated supporting the strike. However, they were far from Santos's characterization of political agent provocateurs. These were middle class and young students, mostly people who organized by social media. According to RCN, by Monday, August 26, a week after it started, the strike has caused so far five deaths and around a billion pesos in losses. BBC reported on Thursday that an increase in food prices is starting to be felt by all Colombians at the grocery stores and restaurants, with potatoes and onions all but doubling his price. In Bogotá on the night of the 27th, 18,000 people marked, sending a clear message. The farmers' demands for a serious dialogue around the agricultural sector needs are not new. And they stand into the very roots of many of Colombia's recent conflicts, globalization and wealth distribution. Wheat, soy, cotton and barley were the first products to be open to international markets a few years ago, radically changing local socio-economic process, hurting the small and medium farmers an entire sector endured enormous losses. On 2010, Colombia had three free trade treaties, one with its neighbors, one with some Central American countries, and one with Chile. By 2013, there are 10 free trade agreements, adding not only US, Mexico, and Canada, but also some European countries. South Korea and European Union had already been signed and there are some more with countries as far as Turkey, Israel and Japan. So new products are being incorporated on those international treaties. Products like potatoes, legumes, cocoa, sugar and diary. These spells doom for small and medium farmers who previously moved to those products to avoid unfair competition. And now they expect to, again, endure difficult losses. Back in Tunja, where 50,000 people have marched in support of the farmer, Juan Manuel Santos was forced to publicly recognize that the crisis of the farming sector was not a consequence of his administration's policies, but of a structural problem years in the making. By then, the direct pressure of the farmers in the capital city's full supply started to prove a powerful lever. Tons of rice, fruits and legumes had to be buried under the ground because of the producers' inability to transport them to their markets in the city. On Friday the 17th, President Santos spoke on national TV. 
He ordered the military units and police to quell the unrest and exercise maximum force if necessary against any political agent provocateur or violent element. He also offered 5 to 10 million pesos reward to anyone who can help identify those allegedly responsible for wrecking stores and assaulting people. While he mentioned the needs of the agricultural sector, he spent most of his time talking about the violence by the demonstrators and about the same political infiltration by Marcha Patriotica he had mentioned a week earlier. On Saturday the 31st, most of the roads were open and cities like Tunja came back to a somehow normal routine. But the strike has not ended, and the farmers' demands of protection against free trade and U.S.'s big farm have not been addressed. The Farmers' Press Agency published on Friday an statement by the strike organization with the following three points. We reject the political characterization of the strike by President Santos. We are a national popular agricultural movement supported by truck and bus drivers students, community mother organizations, and farmers in general. We presented a concrete scroll of petitions to the government. Two, we are more than willing to dialogue and reach any agreement with the government. It is President Santos who negotiated with local organization. Three, there is an attempt to criminalize the youth by blaming the violence on them. If you look at the videos carefully, you will see that the police and the army are the ones causing the violence. We believe we are under an undeclared martial law. After being between a rock and a hard place at the beginning of the week, President Santos turned the tables around in a very strategic way. Over the last few days, he negotiated with each local front instead of the National Strike Board. And without making any major promises to local leadership, he made them compromise and leave their blockades. Then he sent the army to keep the roads open. But the structural problems, years on the making, as the president described them, are far from being resolved. It is yet to be seen if Colombia's small farmers will be able to fight and survive the competition with big farms' genetically modified products and its lower prices. Reporting for The Real News, this is Oscar Leon.